Which leads me to another staple of the Bedford Academy program. Yes. To participate in high school sports, you need maybe a 68 average, Five. just something like that. Five. 65. Yeah. 65. To play for Bedford, what GPA do you need? You must have an 80 GPA. I'll say it again. You must have an 80 GPA. <laughs> now, Coach, I understand setting a standard, but many would fear that they would lose out on quality basketball players setting a standard that high at 80 points. I do. I've missed out on quite a few. Um, they love our style of play. They love my coaching. And I even have parents say, I don't know about that 80, Coach. And this is a true story. I have plenty of parents come to me and say, Coach, I don't know about And which I respect. They know their child. Right. But let's be honest. You're not getting to college with 65. Yes, sir. It ain't going to happen. You may can go to a junior college and, you know, but a power five, top schools, D2s, even high D3s, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. You're not getting it. Let's, let's be real. It's not going to happen. When did you make that decision? Well, we used to have it at 75. It used to be 75. Mm -hmm. Um, still not a 65, but right. it should be a 75. About five years ago, my principal said, yeah, listen, 80. I said, no problem. <laughs> 80. And I was actually going to bring, I'll have it in my car, I was going to bring you our report cards wow. and let you see them and let you see. Now, these kids are taking trigonometry, geometry, AP courses. Four and two. Some kids are taking two and three AP courses. Mm -hmm. It's real. You And they got to sign a contract. The parents got to sign a contract as well. You don't reach the 80 GPA, you're not playing. Now, let's say this. If I have a kid that's busting his butt, doing yeah. everything he's supposed to do, and he falls short of that 80, say he gets a 76, mm -hmm. but that teacher vouches for him and say, Coach Phelps, he's been all the tutoring. He's done everything I asked him to do. He's handed all his work in. He's been on time. He's really doing well. He just... You know, the 80 is a benchmark. It's a number. Right. But if he get falls short and that teacher vouches for him, I'm going to let him play. So the 80 is a benchmark. Right. Now, we get a kid, and it's a true story. I lost the championship game. Remember, I won the championship in 2010, and I've been to the final or semifinal for years. Yes. I've set kids because they didn't get the 80. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they didn't hand their work in. They were late to class. I have a first period rule. If you're late to your first period, you ain't going to play. Mm. Got to be on time. So it's a lot of rules and dynamics that you have to have just to be. Because this basketball thing is not going to last. It's a life thing. What are you going to do when this basketball thing is over? And you go get a job and you just come walking in late. It's a problem. It's a problem. A few things, Coach. Yes. And to back you up, I was reading an article. I think it was your second year. You sat snag and best yes. in now, a playoff game. But listen to this, though. Listen to this. They had the 80. Well, Sean didn't have the 80. Best, guess what his mother wanted? At 85. His mother made me sit him. Wow. This is what, and I'm trying to tell them, I'm revolt, I'm like, <laughs> but he got the 80. And the mother said, this is my house rule. And guess what? That kid right now, guess what he's doing? Best, he's a math teacher. Wow. He's a math teacher right now. And me and him, when we meet, talk to this day. And he remember that. He said, Coach, we could have won that championship. I said, well, you should have got that 85 like your mother said. Yeah. But I'm going to argue with that mother when I have an 80 benchmark. Right. And he didn't meet the benchmark that his mother said, which was an 85. So I had to sit Sean Snag, who was our highest scorer, and then my top rebounder I had to sit to. That was in the championship game. And we lost that game by three points. I remember this to this day. It was Dude. against Long Island City. Yeah. Do, do the other kids get frustrated with you, coach? Like, come on, coach. All the time. All the time. But I tell them, there's two things you can do. You can buy in and work your butt off. Or, like I've had kids before, they transfer or they leave. That's a tough spot for you to be in. Championship game. The school's counting on you. The players are counting on you. Their families are counting on you to deliver this championship. And you were able to stand pat. It's been like that for years. Mm -hmm. I tell the people all the time, these are our rules. We may not win on the basketball court sometime, but over the years, we win in life mm -hmm. with these kids because all my kids are, are successful. Mm -hmm. I had one tragic, one guy. You always get one. When you're dealing with a big population, you're always going to deal with some issues. But I had, he graduated high school. Right. All my, I got 100% graduation rate. All my kids graduated, every single one. 
And I got about a 95 to 98 where all my kids get into college. They all get in and do well yeah. and graduate and do well. And I have one kid that just, you know, that fell to the wayside, you know. I don't want to say his name or anything like that, but we have one kid that kind of fell to the wayside. Um, and it just happens. When you're dealing with a big population, you're going to have – Princeton have issues. Yeah. How, Howard has issues. Every school has issues when you're dealing with things. So that's not too bad. I'm 16 years in and only have one kid. Yeah. I think that's pretty good. For sure. It's interesting. You said you had the parents sign a contract too. Oh, yes. We all in this. Yeah, so everybody's all in. The parents know. Because trust me, <laughs> some parents say, oh, I didn't know anything about this. No, no. Here's the paperwork. Look at it. Understand it. This is what's going on. And I tell parents, one thing about me, I'm very consistent. People that know me, I'm very, very consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, like overwhelming. I'm very t -t 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 just like that. So, um, yeah, the parents know this is what has to be done. Mm -hmm. And the parents, the parents that's really serious about it, I have no issues. They love it. Coach, I did uh, a segment the other day, and I was talking about people always talk about how can they get in a podcast, and I said the number one thing is your reputation. Yes. What is said about you when you're not present. Right. And these are the stories that are <laughs> circulating about you right. and your program, Coach. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's documented in New York Post articles, right. your, your graduation rate, the kids you put in college, and... Um, there's a young man you have on your team this year mm -hmm. who played AAU basketball for us years ago. Right. Amazing young man. His family is amazing. He went, I believe, the charter school route or something. His mom wanted him in that school for academics reasons. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to come compete in the PSAL. Right. And this year I learned that he was competing for you. And uh, when I saw mom, I know she was still a little unsure about right. it. I said, Ma, you couldn't have picked a better place. You sure did say that. I remember you said that. <laughs> you said he's with Phelps. Thumbs up. You you got a good place. And that great that kid is doing great right now. He great. looked like doing one good. of y'all. Yeah, he's doing doing great, man. He's doing great. Man. He looked like one of y'all. Right. Indeed, fit, Phelps. He's fitting right in. Yeah. But I told him, I said, Ma, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Yeah. He, he's in the right place. 